Uh, how many team members do you use during an exorcism and what are the rules? Kyle's actually the one that's in charge of my team formation and the one that actually does the um, setting up the teams, when who's going to be there, uh, etc. But at every exorcism, there's a minimum of four people. So the first is the person who's possessed, the second one is me. Um, the, the other one is we do not allow people to come alone to the sessions. They have to bring some of them, someone with them. There's two reasons for that. One is someone needs to be their advocate, but the other side of it is uh, I don't want to babysit. Because a lot of times people come out of the sessions and it takes sometimes hours for them to get to the point where they can function. And so uh, my schedule is too tight for that. But it's also, uh, there was one exorcist recently who was dealing with that very phenomenon and he didn't have someone with the person to represent them. And as a result, he had to, he and his, um, his uh, assistants had to sit there for nine hours while this person still took, 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 took this person to come out of it. And so there's there's that on. So that you have to have someone. And then there has to be someone who represents us and the diocese. And the reason being is, is because they have to be able to give verification that nothing inappropriate happened, but they're also there to pray. Optimally, if there's a, um, and we've got, gotten to the point where um, that's the absolute minimum, but we now have gone to, we've shifted it to um, the people that represent us have to be a couple. We want both a husband and a wife doing it. And the reason for that is because of the fact that um, we have found that over the course of time, if you don't have both of them on board in the process, eventually the person that isn't doing it um, very often starts to become begrudged that the person's gone for long periods of time. And so the demons will start to use that to create difficulties so that you can't, that the other person feels like they can't continue or that it just starts to create difficulties so that you're wondering whether you should continue with the person or have sessions, etc. From a practical standpoint, you look at some countermeasures. If you're the demon and you want to avoid the session, then it's much easier to take out one individual rather than a marriage. And so if the, if the couples are operating as a mature, praying marriage, solid vocation, without small children at home, um, our aged parents at home, because the attack is gonna to go, he's gonna do whatever he can do to stop the session. And so, or to delay the session, and we see that over and over. So, the couples who assist us in Denver, um, they go through a training. Now, on the diocesan level, the team configuration may be a little bit different, but there is always a team approach. And so, the primary focus is going to be the safety of the individual, the ongoing safety of the individual, and then um, everything's kind of geared toward that. So, that's a lot of what I do is the, is the team training. In diocesan prayer, you've got interceders, you've got observers, you've got people who are praying to keep the, the electricity in the wires and the water in the pipes, just to keep the infrastructure, because he's gonna, again, he's gonna attack whatever he can attack to stop the prayer. And so if he can bust a pipe and stop the prayer, that's what he's gonna do. 